Well guys, we knew this video was coming and we're going to cover the subject and it's going to be tough. A lot of people are asking about it and it's this I just want to put a disclaimer now. This entire video is very much theoretical since we know nothing about the NX's power draw, but I have a couple of ideas and I I think I think I have an idea of how much we can expect battery-wise, like battery life that we can get out of the switch. So, you know what? Let's Let's just dive in and just take a look, see what we can figure out. So since we don't know any specs right now, other than it's probably the X2, but we barely know anything about the X2 at this point from NVIDIA, uh, we have to kind of compare it to something that was in the past, I guess, uh, that's the close enough relative that we can get to this X2. So after doing some research, the closest thing we can get, right now anyway, that we know enough about to make a conclusion on, is the NVIDIA Shield tablet and the tablet's a K1, okay? So it's using an older processor, a much more inefficient processor. Let's, let's start with that. Uh, the Tegra K1 is, it's a quad-core 2.2 gigahertz processor and it uses a Kepler GPU. And it's, it's a powerful processor, don't get me wrong, it is, but it's an old processor, like I said. Now, the tablet itself is basically brute forcing its battery life here because it is using a massive 5200 milliamp hour battery. That's a big battery. That's twice the size, a little more, a little less than twice the size of my phone's battery in a seven inch tablet. At the time, the K1 is not efficient GPU, CPU combo compared to what can be done today. Nvidia has made a lot of strides in their uh, mobile, um, mobile CPU, GPU combo processors at this point. And the real reason they've been doing that is because of, for example, they've been contracted to make processors for uh, cars. Like in the operating system, when you use like a car with a touchscreen and everything, they've been building processors and mobile GPUs for those. So they've been contracted out, which is good for Nintendo because a lot of the groundwork was already laid for this X2 chip that's supposedly in it. So there wasn't a lot of R&D that had to go into it on Nvidia's part since they've already been producing this chip in its basically its first generation form. This is the second generation form that supposedly Nintendo has contracted with Nvidia to create and produce for their new system. So while the shield is close to it, keep in mind the shield has to push more pixels, which means the GPU uh, has to work harder. This is a 1200p display on this tablet. And it's a seven inch tablet. That's a very high resolution for that. So with that, it's gonna have to operate faster. Clock speed's gonna have to stay faster when things are going on, on the screen. It's gonna work harder. It's gonna pull more power. Again, we have a smaller X2 in the switch, nanometer wise, and it's going to use less power. But how much less power, we don't know yet. All we know is that the K1 chip was able, in the shield, which is very, very similar looking, if you look at it, it's gonna be very similar to the switch in terms of functionality. I mean, it has a touch screen. It has all the antennas and different things. Probably has more antennas, actually. Uh, Wi-Fi has all kinds of stuff. It has cameras. We don't even know if the Switch has a camera. It has all of this stuff. Bluetooth built in. It has a micro SD card reader. It has a lot going on that is comparable. Just looking here, looking, that's comparable to the Switch. Now, the big question is, how much battery life does the Shield get? Well, if you're playing a game on it, so let's say you're playing, uh, I don't know, you could play, not Candy Crush, because that's not gonna, that's not gonna get it done. Okay, so let's say you're playing Asphalt Nitro, which is a great looking game. It's uh, very, very taxing on the GPU. Uh, 3D models rendered and everything. You're looking at a total of about five hours of battery just playing the game. So the tablet's gonna get five hours of battery, which honestly, if, if I looked at the specs on the Switch and said, wow, this thing gets five hours battery, Good job, Nintendo, honestly, because most people right now online are expecting three hours of battery life. The only, the only way they get that, where it's three hours battery life, is if Nintendo comes out with a very small battery. And it's possible, it's possible, I'm not saying it's going to happen, it's possible that that happens. That they come out with like a, I don't want to say it, but like a 3500 milliamp hour or a 3400 milliamp hour battery, um, even with the more efficient uh, X2 chip, that doesn't mean it's going to get five hours of battery. Honestly, Nintendo, if, if, if Nintendo, anywhere for Nintendo is listening, brute force this thing like they did with the Shield tablet. Batteries for the Shield tablet are not that expensive. And honestly, if it's going to cut costs at all, 
just solder the thing in. Just solder it straight in. I know with the Wii U tab and other ones we could take the battery out and replace it if we need to. You might still be able to do that, but if it's going to be cheaper and it's going to get us better battery life, solder the thing to the board and just be done with it. I mean, most of the time things don't explode as long as it's not like, like a Note 7 where they're exploding. But those are sealed too though, so. Uh, but go ahead and solder it in. If that's going to mean that we can save four or five dollars off this battery so you can put 5,000 milliamp batteries in and honestly if they jam that size of battery into this switch there is a chance with the more efficient processor and the smaller remember it's a 720p screen so it's not going to push the types of pixels so it may be more efficient for the processor and not draw as much power because of that we could possibly I don't want to say absolutely possibly see six to seven hours of battery life on the switch during gameplay which would be ridiculous but they have to put that battery in. If they don't, honestly, the Switch is going to be have a really hard time out of the gate. They need to put a massive battery in it and keep it so that the processor, when it comes off the dock, clocks down. Because we don't need this massive turbo frequency of, I'm sure NVIDIA is going to slap like a 2.5 or a 2.8 gigahertz clock speed on this thing. And hopefully that's only used when it is in the dock because we don't, we wouldn't need that with a 720p display on the go. Have it sit power. Maybe if, if you need to drop the textures in the game, that's fine, because we're, we're looking at a 720p six inch screen possibly, and we wouldn't even notice them to be honest. Drop the textures, you know, drop the resolution, and just battery life is key. I, I can't stress this enough. If the Switch comes out with a two to three hour battery life, Nintendo is going to have an uphill battle the entire time because they have to convince these people that it's portable, but you can only use it for two to three hours. So Nintendo, please don't do that. The groundwork's here. You can do it. Honestly, you can make this thing last five hours, no problem. With the new, the more efficient processor, jam a big ass battery in there, as long as it's safe, of course. Don't We don't need it exploding. And just talk to NVIDIA about, they're having this custom API made that will give it low level access to the CPU, the RAM, and the GPU, so it can work more efficient and work better together. Why do you think, all right, so iPhones have some of the smallest batteries known to man. I mean, my gosh, the, the new ones that just came out, I don't even think they have a 2000 milliamp hour battery in there, but it lasts longer than you would think. And the reason it lasts longer than you think is because it's so well optimized, they have their own API, the chips, everything work together efficiently. And that's all the system needs to be. It needs to be an efficient, well-run system that sips battery power and it, it does not hog crazy amounts of resources for no reason. So, Nintendo, big battery, please. We need, we need five to six hours of battery life or this thing is having an uphill battle the entire way, the entire generation. So, that's what we're looking at, guys. <laughs> uh, Definitely, hopefully five, six hours, seven would be amazing. Uh, three would be catastrophic. <laughs> so NVIDIA, NVIDIA should be able to design it so it can do that. Honestly, Nintendo just goes to them and says, look, we need five hours battery life. Write us the API, give us the correct clock speeds, and let's make this happen. So that's my thought about the battery life. Uh, I, I'm, I'm hoping five hours is the average, but again, I could be wrong. If five hours is what it is on load, it could probably be left in street pass mode where it's like a standby mode for two, three days, to be honest, which would be amazing because my 3DS, even in street pass mode, dies after five, six, seven hours. So the only thing that scares me, guys, is Nintendo and battery life has not been the best mix recently. When I got my 3DS, it did not last long. The XL lasts better. Not as long as it needs to though, so. That's my thoughts though, guys. Let me know what you think in the comments below about the battery life. Do you think they can attain five hours battery life or do you think they're gonna be stuck at three and just have the hardest time selling this thing to people as a mobile console? So let me know in the description, or let me know in the comments below, guys. And definitely like the video if you had a good time. Um, and subscribe if you want to see more videos of me talking to you guys in the camera. So until then, I'll see you guys later.